بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may the peace and blessings be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon all the prophets and messengers who preceded him alayhi wa salatu salam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my dear brothers and sisters and respected elders <laughs> Somewhere in there there was a salam so maybe I'll say it again. I don't usually like to repeat it, but since there was like one reply, <laughs> I'll say it again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah. Lil munasaba, the Prophet did tell us, Afshu salam abaynukum. You need to spread salam amongst ourselves, and it is uh, one way of uh, joining our hearts together. And it's a great honor for me in that um, this particular masjid uh, is known to me uh, not because I've, I've been here before but because of its status and uh, one of the, if not the founder Sheikh Abu Laban Rahimahullah Ta'ala Rahmatan Wasi'a wa Tayyib, wa tayyib Allahu Thara May Allah have mercy upon him was one of the founders of the masjid and in fact one of our Imams uh, who is still at, at Muntada uh, came a number of years ago uh, when Sheikh Abu Laban when he passed away to attend the Janazah so the masjid itself is as well known to me and it is a great honor really for me to, to be here and a great honor for me to meet my, my brothers and sisters here in Denmark and to meet them uh, to find out what it is like here uh, as a Muslim in Denmark to share ourselves uh, whatever knowledge we have uh, with one another. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to bless us on this particular evening and that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us uh, to have another gathering as we are gathering now in the highest place of Al-Jannah, Allahumma Ameen. Now, <clears throat> the topic of a dua or supplication turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, invocating all different words that can be used. How really to talk about such a topic in, in, in this time that we have here together. So what I'd like to really focus on is that the best of speech is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And none of us will disagree on that. Khaylul kalami, kalamullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best speech is the speech of Allah jalla wa ala. And then within the Qur'an itself, did you find that there are a number of different supplications, different du'a that you can, that you can make. So you, when you go from the very beginning of the Qur'an, from the very beginning, subhanAllah, that there is a du'a. Did we ever think about that? Did you ever know that in every salah that you make, the Qur'an that you read, that you are making du'a, did you realize that? Did you think about that? Did you think about what you are asking for? The beginning of Al-Fatiha Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen You begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, the most beneficent. Maliki Yawmiddin, that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the day of judgment. Maliki Yawmiddin, the king on that day. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in, that you alone we worship and you alone we seek aid. Then you supplicate. After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purely that you say Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Ihdina this na at the end is not just you. Even though you may be praying at home alone, nobody around you, you say Ihdina guide us. So when you're in the jama'ah, when you're in the congregation, 
you're making dua for one another. Oh Allah, guide us. And when you are alone, you're making dua for your fellow Muslims when they are not with you. Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. <coughs> so five times a day, the amount of raka'at, 17 times a day you recite Al-Fatiha that you are supplicating. And at the end of the Al-Fatiha, what do we all say? Ameen. Oh Allah, answer this supplication that I have just made. So then when you go further through the Quran, that there are many types of dua. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us the stories of the prophets. Alayhim salatu salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and teaches us the supplications that they made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were the best of people. And as Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us the supplications of the prophets and messengers in the Quran so that we may know the humbleness and the status of the prophets and messengers when they would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So likewise, when we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we remember the humbleness and the attachment that they had to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we would need to look at our own selves, our attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us concerning this Qur'an, إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم. That this Quran, this book of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, will guide you to that what is the best and the most upright. That what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala teaches us guides you to that what is the very best. Whatever advice Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives to you, that is the very best possible advice that could be given to you. You know when you seek advice from your brother or your sister, maybe from time to time they give you an advice and then you ask another person and you find that advice was better than the first or the third was better than the second. The advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to you is the very best advice. The no better advice could possibly be given concerning that matter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he teaches you. So when we look at the Qur'an, we look at the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we look at the different supplications that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us. And we look at the, the status of the Anbiya, the Prophets and Messengers. Because they're real life examples for all of us. They're examples that we all want and we wish to follow. So when we look at the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, or we look at the story of Yunus alayhi salam, or the story of Musa alayhi salam, we find that on every occasion when there was nothing else that they had except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you found that they would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they wouldn't be relying on the people and they wouldn't be relying on anything else. Let me give you an example. You all know the story of Musa alayhi salam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to Fir'aun, the greatest tyrant of his time, to take Bani Israel away from Fir'aun. Bani Israel essentially were the slaves and did all the hard work and everything for Fir'aun. Now for Musa alayhi salam to go there and say, let Bani Israel, let them free, let them go, is essentially saying that your empire will now crumble. You won't have these people to direct and enslave anymore. Let them go. Of course, he rejected that. There's no way that Fir'aun, by his own choice, was going to let Bani Israel away. So Musa alayhi salam, and the story is long, that they escaped, Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun, that they took the people away Banu Israel away from Fir'aun and that they reached that they reached the sea they reached at the end of the sea behind them was the army of Fir'aun swords pulled 
on chariots and horses ready to slay them down and in front of them was the depths of the sea would you like to die drowning or would you like to die by the sword it's your choice that's what they said to Musa Beno Israel, Beno Israel said to Musa السلام, that's it we have been caught there is no way out nothing left but if you look carefully at the story of Musa السلام, from the very beginning that Musa السلام, had a mission that there was a job that needed to be completed that Musa السلام, who was placed into a basket or something like that and placed into the river to survive that for them to be brought up and to live in the house of this great tyrant and then to go away because of the incident of the, uh, the uh, incident of accidentally killing the man and having to leave and then return to Musa السلام, knew that he had a mission to complete and he realized and that he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never ever forsake him never when you bear all of this in mind when you bear all of this in mind and that what Musa alayhi salam what he went through the trials and tests that he faced to take Bani Israel away from Fir'aun and then for Bani Israel to, Bani Israel to say inna la mudrakun that we have been caught that's it it is over his response his answer at that particular time when you take everything into context it is amazing the amount of certainty that he had in Allah Jalla wa ala, alayhi salam because what did he say let me think about a plan what can we do maybe we can bargain with with Fir'aun no Kalla. no we are not caught Inna ma'aya Rabbi sayahdeen that my Lord is with me and he will guide my Lord is with me and he will guide when there was no possible way out he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put all his trust and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kalla inna ma'aya Rabbi sayahdeen my Lord is with me and he will guide so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Musa alayhi salam to strike to strike the sea with his stick and it it parted and Banu Israel that they were saved the power of supplication the power of one's attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you look at our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam when on how many occasions that all odds were stacked against the Muslims all odds if you look at the Battle of Badr where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam managed to bring together just over 300 men aged between 15 all the way up to into people in their 50s these were not young strapping men fully armed fully ready with the latest technology that they had at the time these were men who were if you looked at them were just picked from anywhere but this if you looked looked at them on the outside because if you compare them the 312 or 313 Muslims compared to the Mushrikun of the Quraysh who had a thousand strong army fully loaded with horses and camels and chain mail and swords and arrows and bows and drums fully prepared you look at the two and you say no comparison these people have no chance the night before the battle and this is really the point I want to focus on
not the battle itself, because we're talking about supplications and dua. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while Allah Azza wa Jal placed upon the Mu'mineen and Nu'as a sleep, a rest before the battle, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up for prayer. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up for prayer while the people rested. And he raised his blessed hands, alayhi salatu wasalam, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling upon the one, and this is key, because Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he mentions in, in his book, uh, Ighathatul Lahfan, has a book talking about the, uh, the trial or the, the plans of a shaytan, how you can save yourself from that. In that book he mentions, he says, that whenever you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember that you are calling upon the one who put you in that test. You are calling upon the one who is testing you. So don't ask the creation to help you. Don't ask your fellow man to help you. Ask the one who is testing you to give you relief, to deliver you from that situation. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his companions there, 315 willing to sacrifice them, to sacrifice themselves for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the, 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 the beautiful dua of the Prophet والسلام, calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying, Ya Allah, that we are your servants. And that we are the only ones who are truly worshipping you as you are to be worshipped. That if we are destroyed, if we are removed from this earth, then who will there remain on this earth to propagate your deen, to worship you correctly? That he raised his hands until the garments, his clothes, began falling off his shoulders. His dua was so intense that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he saw the Prophet والسلام, he said, enough Ya Rasulullah, enough. Is enough. This was the attachment that our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Musa Alayhi Salam and all the prophets and messengers that they had with Rabbul Alameen. That if any one of you desires or wants something and that you have a level of sincerity, a level of trust, reliance on Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah will give that to you. If you have doubts in it, if you think it may not happen, that somehow that you rely on the creation somehow, then you have not turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that He deserves. And even, subhanAllah, even if you dedicate your whole self, you have given the very best supplication that you can offer with the purest of sincerity, the utmost in reliance, then you know yourself that you fall short. And that you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deserving of more than you could possibly, possibly give. Even as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated that if all of mankind, they came together and all that goodness and righteousness were to be put in the heart of one person, Imagine if you could concentrate all that righteousness and goodness into the heart of one person, that would not increase what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses one iota in his dominion and his control of the affairs subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, if somebody, you were to concentrate all the sharr and evil into the heart, it would not affect Allah jalla wa ala's do, uh, dominion and kingship and sovereignty over the whole of the universe. So whatever you can offer, that you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He deserves more, and that you fall short, but yet He subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He gives you more. That He gives you more. That He is more merciful to you, he loves his servants and is more merciful to his servants than you can ever imagine. And if you take the example that the Prophet ﷺ, that he took 
and gave to his companions that after a battle and in fact before I mention that for those of us that our mothers that if there's one person that you were to choose in your life that you rebelled against her maybe or you rebe rebelled against you know a number of people and you wronged them and you oppressed them if there's one person that will overlook and forgive you it will be, be your mother for years you disobeyed her for years you were wrong to her but your mother is your mother and if you go back to your mother she'll accept you because she loves you because she is your mother and the love for a mother that she has for her child is not equaled even by the father so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on an occasion when there was a battle and I'm sure you know the well-known hadith that a woman she was frantically looking for her child for a mother if you know she misses her small child in the masjid just for a few seconds she feels worried this is a place of security a masjid if a father misses his child or his daughter just for a few seconds in a place of security how do you feel what about you've missed your child after a battle when bloodshed everywhere only then for that mother to find her child then the mother takes the child embraces the child here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the Sahaba you see that woman there do you think that she would throw her child back into the fire the Sahaba radiallahu anhum said La ya Rasulallah, she would never do such a thing because at that particular moment the concentration of love and mercy that she would have for her child bearing in mind it's after a battle it would be difficult to find a time a mother would feel towards her child like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us that Allahu arhamu bi ibadihi that Allah is more merciful to his servant than this woman is to her child at this time this just gives us as an example of how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah's mercy has no restrictions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy has no hudud Allah's mercy compasses, encompasses everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that and my mercy encompasses everything and when you think about that and you say it to yourself and you say it again and you say it again and you say it again and my mercy the mercy of Allah Jalla wa ala, it encompasses everything the next time that you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in supplication the next time that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something and that you are a servant who is doing your best to worship him to serve him to carry out his commands to stay away from his prohibitions will Allah, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will he deprive you and even what you are asking for that you believe to be in your benefit to be in your maslaha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he knows best and he knows best that what you are asking for it will harm you but we don't know that we don't know that I think that what I'm asking for will be in my benefit however Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that if he grants it to us it will cause you harm and it may take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may take you away from him so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not decree that or does not give that thing that you are asking for because it's in your benefit then suddenly that servant complains to Allah oh Allah how long I have been asking for this oh Allah how much sadaqah I have given oh Allah you know how I have struggled 
and strived, but I'm not getting it. Do you not ever think, do we not ever think that Allah is not giving that to us because it is not in our benefit? That there are certain people who are not made rich because if they were made rich it would break them. And that there are certain people that they are made poor because if they were made rich it would break them. And the rich people, if they were made poor, it would break them. If one has understandings of matters like this, and that they know that there is no way out, there is no answer, there is no one truly to rely on except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will find yourself at all times, on all occasions, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in those matters where you know your brother or your sister, they can help you. But before you go to them, did you ask Allah to make it easy for you? You ask them to get something, you want to borrow something, you need some help from them, they can quite easily give it to you. But before you do that, did you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for you? To facilitate for you? And did you bear in mind that the supplication of the prophets and the messengers throughout the Qur'an is something that Allah didn't just reveal these ayat for us just to just move over and, and not to think about but rather to think about, to ponder over and to see how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam when he was in the belly of the whale a messenger, a, a, a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was swallowed by a whale. Do you believe that? You believe that a whale swallowed a man? Wallahi, I believe that. Wallahi, I believe that. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me in the Quran. I believe that. When the, you know, maybe you're questioned or you, something comes to you, this is a manifestation of you showing your certainty and, and your Iman with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to you. And then you read the story of Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam and what happened in leaving his qawm, leaving his people and that he was in the belly of the whale and that he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell, tells us, فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ And that he called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the darkness. أَلَّا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ That there is no one who is deserving of any worship except you. Subhanak. Glory be to you. Inni kuntu min al-zalimin. I was from the wrongdoers. I was from the wrongdoers. When you look at the manner, when you look at from the adab that this dua is made in such a dire and difficult situation, oh Allah help me get me out of here. No. The first thing that he mentions here for zulumat, Allah ilaha illa anta subhanak. That there is no one worthy of worship except you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glory be to you. Inni kuntu min al That I was from the wrongdoers. I was from the wrongdoers. I done something wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. This is a supplication. This is the dua of one person. Of one person speaking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us فَاسْتَجَبَنَا لَهُ That we answered his supplication وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ And that we saved him from the down, down feelings that he was in. We saved him from that. وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allahu Akbar And likewise we will save the believers. So you make this dua, make this supplication, 
لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين that there is no one worthy of worship except you glory be to you I am from the wrongdoers we all have mistakes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save you regardless of your situation by his mercy he will save you and have certainty in that because once you realize the power of supplication once you realize the power of you calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will feel one of the most powerful people in the world not because of your money not because of your position because you are addressing and you are speaking to the one who is in control of all of this because you remember a day will come when it will be said liman al mulk al yawm to whom does the kingship and the dominion belong to now the names the money the position all of this who does it belong to now lillahi al wahid al qahar that it belongs to allah alone it belongs to allah azza wa jalla alone the irresistible the all powerful the all supreme this is who it belongs to that no leaf falls from any tree no fish that swims in the sea no ant that crawls upon the earth except that this is by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so my dear brothers and sisters in these short words that i've mentioned i hope to have given a message about the power of dua about the power of supplication and that if you truly use this in the way that it needs to be used that we will see our affairs we will see our situation change like you cannot imagine <coughs> our situation and we can look around and we can you know we can give each other tissues and you know cry over our situation yes we're in a bad situation we are yes there's lots of problems so what are we going to do about it who are you going to return to and who are you going to ask ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us call upon me and I will answer you call upon me and I will answer you wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb if my servant asks for me I'm close wajibu da'wat ad-da'i idha da'a I will answer the call of the one who's calling this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us. Let's not turn away from that, brothers and sisters. Let us renew, strengthen further our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never belittle, never belittle the power of dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who truly have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify the affairs of um, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of paradise and protect us from the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our youngsters, our youth, our young boys, girls, and allow them to be upon the straight path and be with those whom we love. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that you will be with whom you love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us and have the companionship of our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته